This is the unofficial story of the Fulton Skyhook. In the 1940s, the U.S. and British military were using a surface-to-air recovery system, STARS for short, known as the All-American Aviation System. This was composed of a line stretched between two upright poles. The line was attached to a load and placed between the poles. A cargo aircraft which was trailing a grappling hook flew low and slow to catch the line. The grappling hook was attached to a steel cable which was anchored inside the aircraft to a winch. Now this is going from zero to holy shit in 0.2 seconds flat. Once airborne, the load was winched inside the aircraft. This process was used to retrieve downed gliders, materials, and personnel during World War II. Now I don't know if the U.S. military or CIA was looking for a replacement system, but the opportunity came knocking at their door when inventor Robert Edison Fulton Jr. sent pictures to high-ranking military officials of a prototype surface-to-air recovery system Fulton was developing. The idea quickly sparked interest with the CIA and Navy. Fulton was awarded a contract with the Office of Naval Research and testing began in El Central, California. The research evolved from picking up 5 to 10 pound weights to retrieving live loads. The Fulton Skyhook, as it was referred to, was composed of a weather balloon attached to a load by a 500 foot braided nylon cable with a 4,000 pound test strength. Horny aircraft weight. That's not right. Aircraft with horns or guide hooks attached to the nose of them were used for pickups. A lot of different aircraft were tested for this, but the most noted uses were by B-17s, P-2V Neptunes, and C-130 variants. This balloon raised the nylon line above the load and the aircraft snatched the line from the sky. Once the line was secured to the aircraft by a locking mechanism, the balloon was released. The load was lifted almost vertically for the first 100 feet and then it started to trail the aircraft. The load was then winched inside the aircraft. The whole process took about six minutes. Before testing was conducted on humans, pigs were used due to their central nervous system closely resembling that of a human. The first pig to be picked up spun uncontrollably while being winched inside the aircraft. Kind of like this, but with an airplane and a pig. Once in the aircraft, the pig was very disoriented but very much alive. So alive it attacked the crew inside the aircraft once it came to. Shortly after this, people were used. Due to the pig spinning, live loads kept their legs and arms straight out to act as stabilizers during flight. This system was brought to the big screen in the 1968 movie, The Green Berets. In this scene, a 5th Special Forces group, ODA, led by John Wayne, just kidnapped a North Vietnamese general, and they need to get him out to a location where he can be interviewed and kept extremely hydrated. As the line is being reeled out, you can see the red flags attached to it. This is where the aircraft would aim to capture the line, normally located at about the 425-foot level. This was used during daylight recoveries. Battery-operated lights were attached to the line and used during nighttime operations like depicted in the 2008 film The Dark Knight. The CIA declassified a 1962 mission called Project Cold Feet, in which the system was used to retrieve two CIA operators from an abandoned Russian drift station, codenamed NP-8, which was floating in the Arctic. During the Cold War, both sides played games in the Arctic, and the CIA used this opportunity to snatch up valuable information and technology the Russians were using for studies of the Arctic. NP-8 was located too far for helicopters to reach and was around too much ice for an icebreaker to get to. Landing aircraft on NP-8 was also not feasible due to the terrain of NP-8. On 28 May 1962, two operators were delivered by parachute to the ice station. Once they had boots on the ground, they had 72 hours in which to collect as much information and equipment as they could. When getting picked up, the first skyhook load was all the information and equipment they collected. The second load was the two operators. This mission was deemed a success and delivered information as to the Russian acoustic studies in the Arctic, which were used to detect submarine operation. Project Coldfeet is the only public accord of the Skyhook being used for military operations I could locate on the internet. However, the Skyhook system was maintained from the 1950s to 1996 when the Air Force Special Operations Command mothballed the system. The Skyhook's aerial retrieval capabilities have been replaced by extended ranges of modern helicopters and spy extraction methods. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Trash Panda Actual out.